Hello everyone, this video is going to show, talk about how to solve, one way to solve multiple coupled nonlinear equations in MATLAB. So what we have here I'm showing is, is a series of equations, three equations, uh, they're coupled and nonlinear, so the point of these equations is to solve for this L, SL term, it's a laminar burning velocity term, and in the equations we have this is an unknown, the YFC is an unknown, and the TF is an unknown. So we have three equations, three unknowns, so we should be able to solve for them. And uh, so I'm going to talk about how we go about doing that. So I'm going to close that. The, the equations aren't particularly important. So in MATLAB you can do symbolic equation manipulation. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that in depth in this video, but uh, basically you want to build your equations as as you see fit so a, just a simple overview sms and that is and then you define your variables um, as shown in this line so you can see i've defined alpha gamma epsilon sl tf yfc uh, ze xi uh, lots of different variables and then i'm going to define my equations so this is uh, they they came from a paper well the one i just showed is a model i wrote but uh well, and then, but it's a modification from the paper, so we have equation 28, 12, and 30. So that's how I denote them. So equation 28, and I define the equation here on um, this line, goes all the way over. And then I'm going to replace the subterms, in other words, epsilon, ze, which is the Zeldovich number, both, they're, they're included in the main equation, for instance, epsilon is here but it is actually a, a function of 1 over the Zeldovich number and rather than putting uh, let's say 1 over ZE in the equation 28 I'm gonna replace the epsilon with this with this term. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, let's say for the Zeldovich number if I want to redefine the Zeldovich number in some other way I don't. I can just change this line rather than going through the equation and trying to to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to use the subs, the subs function and the compose function combined to to replace these. The reason to do this is because the compose function takes. It's really meant for equations with one variable only. It's going to look. It's going to look at the equation, look at all the variables in it, and choose the last one. So what we do is we say we're going to substitute using this line, we're going to substitute epsilon for triple z's and then use the compose function and replace and then replace epsilon with this epsilon as we defined up here. So it's a little bit of, of programming trickery and we're going to do that for all three equations. Equation 12 doesn't have any of those replacements needed and equation 30 has several more that we're going to do. So we're going to we're going to we're going to substitute all of these things into equation 30. I'll talk about that more in depth in a different video. Um, so to get we're going to use the nonlinear least squares function. So this is LSQ NON LIN is the name of the function. And to use it for a single equation isn't too bad. You can look up how to do that simply on uh, on MathWorks on the MathWorks website. But to do multiple equations, you need to arrange your setup in such a way that the code understands what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the equations that we just defined, and I, I have some strange naming uh, naming schemes here. But we're going to use the we're going to turn them into characters. So we we defined our equations and then we're going to say okay so I have this final equation equation 28 version 5 underscore s and I'm going to turn it into a character string and so that's f111 underscore s then I'm going to take equation 12 turn it into a character string and equation 30 and turn it into a character string so my three equations I'm turning them all into character strings independently that's three lines then I'm going to combine the character strings together into a single line with brackets around it. So that's what this uh, triple F underscore F underscore S does. So you have parentheses bracket and then a bracket equation one semicolon in 
in quotes, in single quotes, and then uh, equation two, then another semicolon in, in single quotes, equation three, and a closing bracket in in single quotes, and then uh, uh, another actual closing bracket and uh, in parentheses. Then, so you just generated a, a character string of your entire set of equations. So you, you put your set of equations in a row. Now, we had three unknowns, TF, YFC, and SL. When, in those three equations, there was finally, when you, when you did all the substitution and got through with everything, there were three unknowns. So when you use the nonlinear least squares function, you need it in terms of x. So what we're going to do is replace the tf, yfc, and sl terms with x1, x2, and x3. So we're going to use the reg express prep function. So there's reg, exp, rep. So we're just going to replace in term. We're going to replace the tf in this final function with x parentheses 1. So we're, we're going to put this in as a string, or as a character, as a character string. Then we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to, we're going to define that FFF2 underscore S. Then we're going to go to FFF3 underscore S and replace the YFC in the same way with X parentheses 2. And then uh, we're going to replace the SL and the X3. So now instead of having three named variables, we're going to have uh, X1, X2, and X3. Then we're going to... And then we're going to take the final FFF4 underscore S uh, character string and turn it into an inline function. So we're going to take this inline command and turn the character string into an inline function. We're going to call that FW underscore S. Then we're going to define some functions like the options for our nonlinear uh, solution method. Uh, I don't remember. It's just this is very simple. We're just going to turn the display off. And then we're going to input our FWS function into the nonlinear least squares um, function here. So x of s underscore x underscore s is our output. And uh, res norm underscore s, this, is, this gives you some information about the, uh, when it, uh, how it, com not compiles, how it, how it comes together, how the solutions, um, can't remember the word now, but how the solution, how good the solution methods are. But this is your solution that it's gonna, gonna give. So, we're gonna have S, FS, and then we're gonna put boundary, upper, lower limits and upper limits, uh, lower boundaries and upper boundaries, or, what well, we're gonna, this is initial guesses, actually. You input. You can just do it with your equation and initial guesses, uh, but there's no telling where your where your answer is going to be. Or you can do it with um, upper boundary and lower boundaries, which is the way I've done it here. So we have our our we say our output bracket answers um, solution method inform or solution information. LSQ, NON, LIN, parentheses, our inline function, our initial guesses for the three inputs, then the lower limits on the inputs in, in brackets, and the upper limits for the inputs in brackets, and the options. Now you want to be aware that if you you want to make sure your upper and lower limit are outside of the range you're dealing with for all of your variables because if it's not, you'll let's say peg against your upper limit and hold there and then force the other variables to make up the difference. So if you forget that you've set boundaries and you get funny looking results or the results don't change when you change your inputs, check your boundary conditions because that may uh, be a, an issue. Okay, so then uh, I'm just going to take my three x underscore s terms and rename them. So x underscore s of 1 is going to be my temperature, x 
underscore S of 2 is going to be mass fraction, and X underscore S of 3 is going to be my uh, lambda burning velocity. So I can run this, if I run it, and I look at my uh, command window, I can see I had it just write it out. So here you can see the answers to the three terms I was trying to solve for. So the temperature, the YFC, and the SL. So this is one method. I'm sure it's not the best method. It was the method I came up with. It took me several weeks to come up with this coding scheme to actually get this nonlinear least squares function to recognize uh, multiple equations. I found so somebody else did it first um, in a simpler way, and I uh, so I used their their kind of syntax to do this. I hope you found this useful. And have a good day.